Ladies and gentlemen, today is November 29th, 2016. Almost got that wrong, but today is the King of Kale Show episode 319, where we learn to be better artists. My name is Keenan Lafferty, and I would like to welcome you to another show. Today, we are going to be jumping back into our good old Made of Metal piece, which you guys have been voting on. You picked your composition, which was over here on the left side. You guys really like this one, so we refined it. And if you guys are curious, this is episode three of the series. If you'd like to go back and check out the other episodes, just click up here. It'll take you back a couple weeks. You can get caught up to where we are right here. But today we are going to be not talking about thumbnails. We're not talking about thumbnails. We're not talking about refinement, but today we're talking about lines and we're going to be getting lazy with lines. And what does that actually mean? What does that actually mean, getting lazy with lines? Well, it's actually a clever play on words, which you'll find out in just a moment, but I'm also a little bit lazy, as you can tell, with my anime hair, right? Because you guys, I mean, this show was designed to be a step behind the scenes, to see what the real life of an artist is like. And you guys think I'm always well-groomed? You think I'm freshly showered every time I get up in here? Heck no, I'm not. I'm sitting down, I got messy hair, I'm in my pajamas, right? I'm working like this, okay? And you guys deserve to see that. So we're gonna be getting into that today. So we're being lazy in that way. But also, we are not, you know who's not been being lazy is you guys on Facebook. So journey with me over to the good old K and Kale fan art at tinyurl and click this cryptic link to see all the amazing submissions that you guys have been submitting. And once again, thank you so much to everyone who has come out of their shells. If you have not yet come out of your shell and gotten your freaking awesome art featured on the show, by the way, like that Mika and that Farah, really good, awesome stuff. Uh, then just go ahead and head over here, like it, submit your art, and you will be featured next week. Oh yeah, that Starbucks lady is very cool. Very, very cool. I've never seen anybody do something like that before. So let's go ahead. All that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into today's show. And forgive me if I seem a little bit out of practice or I'm a little bit mumbly or stumbly because I took a week off because of Thanksgiving. And I didn't tell you guys because I suck and I'm sorry about that, but I will be making reparations for that. Don't you worry. Okay, so. So here is our finished, or well, kind of almost finished, close enough, we can start some line art on this today, but you might be curious about how we even got there. So let's continue with where we left off from last week, and in the meantime, I will tantalize your earbuds, your earphones, your eardrums with my pleasant speaking voice. Well, hopefully you think it's pleasant because you're gonna be listening to it for the next half hour. So. Let's go ahead and get into this. So, um, and I will begin by talking to you about, okay, so here is my sketching technique and we need to zoom in on this, okay? I'm already making mistakes, but that's okay because we're, we're just going forward with this, okay? You guys get to see everything, see everything. Okay, so we got to a point where we really liked where Mika was yesterday or uh, last week or two weeks ago. And um, I just really like the flow that's moving through this this area. And and you guys know I'm a huge fan of flow. We set up our compositions so that we way we actually had flow. And I was thinking about doing a slight different version of Mocha's pose at the top. So you guys can see me sketching that out right here. Uh, eventually ended up, hey, what do you know? Going back to the original sketch because you guys, I tell you this so many times, in your original sketches, when you're not trying, when you're just kind of having fun, oftentimes that's when your genius flows out of your mind and onto the canvas. So never take that lightly, right? You guys got to understand the inner genius within and how to bring it out, right? And oftentimes it comes out when you're being lazy, right? So there's a lot of lazy stuff that's going to be happening today. And there's a lot of stuff that basically has to do with your best work coming out when you stop caring, okay? Now, what do I mean by that? Well, basically what I mean is, and I'm using myself as example one, um, you guys would not believe how many times I get onto the show. I'm about to record uh, an episode for you guys and I start thinking to myself, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm really excited to teach this. I'm really excited to teach this line art tutorial today, but oh, but is it good enough? Oh man, what about all these people that just like, oh, so many people have been asking for basic stuff and, and, and this isn't like super basic. In fact, I'm gonna be talking about like like a piece of software that you have to download and it's like, oh, people are gonna get mad and they're gonna hate me and it's gonna be terrible. And then I started thinking about all like the terrible things that can happen from releasing a show. And you think that by episode 300, I would actually be over this stuff, but no, it's a constant battle. It's a constant thing. It's always trying to like pull you back. It's a, it's a fight for territory, right? And as soon as you stop fighting, that stuff is gonna pull you back, right? You're gonna get pulled back to your self-conscious, un uh, like doubtful, like all those terrible feelings. It gets, it pulls you back there. So, how do you remedy that? How do you remedy that? And you might be curious why I'm going into a thoughtful today. And that is because I really miss doing thoughtfuls, and I want to do some more of them. Okay, so you guys get a mini thoughtful, but don't worry, there will be more thoughtfuls on another channel, and that is going to be coming up soon. 
but we do need to talk about this. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, we're caught up to where we are now. And now I'm gonna teach you guys about lines, okay? How to get lazy with lines. Okay, so um, the reason why I said lazy is because we're gonna be using a piece of software, right, called Lazy Nizumi, okay? So down here, see this little LN in my taskbar? We're gonna go ahead and pull that up. Hey, look at that, oh wow, Lazy Nizumi Pro. What a simple UI design, and yet, what does it do? Well, let's find out, let's find out. And I'll be teaching you guys, first of all, I really like this, and of course I'm not sponsored by Lazy Nizumi. If I was, I'd have to put it in the description, otherwise I'd be like other people on YouTube who don't like to do that stuff. But uh, no, I'm not sponsored by Lazy Nizumi. I was actually recommended this by my girlfriend. And for the longest time, I said that I didn't really, I was like, I don't need that stuff. I can do lines, like, look at this. Look at this, I'm, I'm just gonna go in there. I'm gonna grab my line brush. I'm gonna grab my ink brush, right? Which is basically just a hard round brush with minimal, uh, what's the word, width decay on your, on your pressure sensitivity. Right? And I can create smooth lines. I mean, look at this. I mean, look, that's awesome. I can, I can make super uh, clean lines, super smooth lines. I don't need lazy Nizumi. I don't need that crap. Right? So let's go ahead and try to do that. Let's go ahead and try to do that on Mika here. Okay, so we have our, our um, outlines basically done, or our pencils done. Now we want to start lining things, okay? But here's the problem that we're going to run into, is that if you try to do this very slowly, do you see all of the tiny little imperfections that are going to appear, right? All this crap in there. Now, there is a way around this. There is a machete that you can use to hack down your way through the jungle. You don't have to use, you don't, you don't have to use the Sherpas. You don't have to use the guides. You can do this on your own. I'm gonna show you guys how to do this. I'm gonna hand you the machete. That way, you don't have to feel too pressured to go and buy this. By the way, it's $35. I think it's totally worth it for what it's going to do for you. But, okay, here's the machete way. So the way you have to do this is you must place your, your middle and index finger on the Alt-Z key at all times. Or I guess in this case, I put my ring finger and index finger on Alt-Z, okay? Or Control-Z, sorry. Control-Z. Now the way that you're gonna do this is you're basically going to go through and go over and over again because it has to be done in a fluid line, okay? So there's one, okay, cool. Here's number two, boom, okay, uh, boom, okay? So that's smooth, let's see if we can pull off of that, right, and then you kinda do one of these things. And this is the way that I would always do my smooth lines, right? In fact, there was a client that I was working for where I sat here and did this over and over and over again. And then what you have to do is you have to take your eraser, right, you gotta set that to a hard round brush too, and then you gotta go in there and you gotta like erase this stuff and kinda clean that up, okay? So that's the machete way. It's gonna take a little bit more time, but it's free, right? It's free and it's absolutely doable. I've done it this way for many years. Um, it's just kind of a pain in the butt. And uh, it's honestly one of the biggest reasons why I hate doing line art. But for this, in this case, I want this to be reminiscent. I mean, you guys are familiar with Gurn Logon. I mean, look at these lines. It's all very, very skinny, skinny lines with um, you know flat shapes or, or flat shades of color and uh, cell shading techniques, right? But we need to get this technique down or we need to get this the same style down, right? But we can't do that if our hand is like shaking all over the place, right? And doing that type of stuff. We need a tool. We need a power tool to do this, okay? So you can't, so this is basically building a house with a hammer. Now I'm gonna teach you guys how to do it with power tools, okay? So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Let's go ahead and put a new thing up here. And let's go ahead and hit this power button. Power up the lazy Nizumi. And let's see what it does. You might notice that, oh, the other thing I forgot to say is that you can try the entire thing. You can try the tool for free for 30 days. So give it a shot. If you don't like it, then don't worry about it. If you like using the machete, then use the machete. So right now I have it set to smoothing massive. You can put it on smoothing subtle and all that stuff. And you can even like mess around with the tools to make it different, but I don't like that. I think actually their default settings are really nice. But let's take a look at what it does. Whoa, look at that. It actually like looks like I'm pulling a string. Do you see the string that kind of pulls off of? I really hope you can see that. I hope that UI translates over through XSplit. But what it's doing is it's creating like a, I'm basically pulling a string behind my cursor or behind my, the input of my tablet. And that allows me to, I can actually move slowly on this and it corrects a lot of those little tiny things. Cause see if I did that same line and I try to do it as slow, do you see how like those tiny little wobbles appear in there? So just compare. This is basically Lazy Nizumi in a nutshell. It's gonna move you from this over to this, 
for $35. How about that, guys? How about that, right? I sound like I'm really giving a pitch. They should totally sponsor me. I should have gotten this for free, dang it. All right, so <laughs> but uh, so now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and take Lazy Nizumi and let's line our Mika, okay? And I'm gonna show you guys how I would use this. I literally downloaded it yesterday, so um, I, might, I might turn it on and off, and I'm gonna show you guys how I do that. So that way, you at home can do the same thing. All right, so let's go ahead and turn on that smoothing massive. Uh, I'm gonna be working with lines that are about, what is this, five pixels? I'm gonna go like seven pixels. That seems good. Now, I want all of my lines to be about the same width, right? Now, if we look at our old outline, our, our pencils, you see how there's a lot of weighted lines? I really wanna try to avoid that. In fact, I probably shouldn't have rendered it out exactly like this, considering I wanted a final look like Gurren Logon, right? Because they don't have any, there's no weighted lines here. It's all anima animation lines. And the reason why you don't want to have a lot of weighted lines in animation is because it, unless those lines are the same weight through every single frame, right? You got to imagine there's like there's like 12 to 24 frames in a second. And if each of the, the weighted lines, they might change, right? One artist might ink it one way and another artist might ink it another. And those lines are going to basically vibrate as they go. And certain uh, shows, I think Edit and Eddie was a good example of a show that actually liked that. They embraced that. And the lines kind of like jitter and, and uh, move around as the characters uh, talk, or even when they're holding still. So it's not necessarily a terrible thing, but it's something that you have to keep in mind, okay? So the same thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna keep my width at seven, and I'm gonna begin lining this character with the Lazy Nizumi, okay? So I want to get a nice smooth line, and I've got my finger still on Control Z, right? Because I wanna get that perfect line that I'm looking for, and that looks good, I like that. Um, I'm really particular around the edges of the face specifically because I just really feel that that is a very important part of your character that you need to get right. Um, but I don't know. I might be overthinking it. Probably overthinking it. It's not that big of a deal. Most important thing that you can do is just have smooth lines, smooth lines, okay? Now, I noticed a couple things in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and erase some of these parts and I'm going to kind of redo them redo just this area. Now I want to be really careful about where I connect it, right? You want to be very conscious of where your lines connect because you're going to have to go in there and just make those tiny little adjustments. Okay. And that's if you want your lines to be like super pristine, right? You can get away with a little bit of in, um, a little bit of imperfection, no big deal. But, uh, yeah, just in general. Just in general, stuff to keep in mind. I mean, look at how clean those shapes are. Look at how clean those lines are. I really, really like that a lot. So let's go ahead and continue. I will probably, let's go ahead and set a goal to just finish Mika. Let's finish Mika's lines. And I'll show you guys. And, and this is really good because you guys can see the entire learning process as I go through and do this. So that way, when you guys try this out, it's like, oh man, I can't draw my lines perfectly the first time. Oh wait, but that's the way that Keenan did it too. Okay, well, you don't have to feel too bad. Don't have to feel too bad. You can see the learning curve that I go through. I feel like that's honestly something, okay. So there's something that I should never do. Okay, so something that I used to do, that was a, that's an old train track method, right? So I used to draw lines like this, where I kind of do this type of thing. In fact, this is something that I really like to do when I'm sketching. That is like a an artifact of when I like to sketch. And you guys see me do stuff like this all the time. I draw in my lines like this, and I'll like make like a character's face like that, you know? But see, I like always do like this train track method. Now that does not work with Lazy Nizumi. Lazy Nizumi is all about being lazy. One stroke, one stroke all the way through. Okay, so remember, remember that, okay? So let's go turn Lazy Nizumi back on, pick our lazy lines. Let's go ahead and try to connect this train track. Boom, there we go, okay, cool. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the hands because the hands I feel are probably going to be a little bit more tough because they're a little bit more, I don't know, I want to say like organic looking. They're a little bit more organic. Maybe some imperfections in there would actually look nice. But let's go ahead and connect this chin shape. Now, uh, another thing that you might be thinking about is, well, Kenan, you have this weighted line. You have this weighted line. And this is basically where you're gonna to have to make a couple decisions, guys. Because, let me go ahead and turn this off really quick. Let me tell you guys something that, the constant battle that's going through my head as I'm doing this. So we have a weighted line that's much thicker than the actual lines that we're using, say right here. Now there's an outside and an inside to it. 
But where does our actual line go? Does it cross the outside? Does it cross the inside? Or does it go somewhere in between? Let's use a new color. Does it go somewhere in between these two? So this is something that I personally have not fully figured out yet. Now, in the case of this face, in the case of the face, do you guys remember how um, I said that the, the face, the edge of the face is very important to preserve? I find that staying on the inside edge actually works more often. So in this case, with the shoulder and the arm, with the shoulder and the arm, I'm going to be more likely to hug the outside of the edge, right? The outside of this edge, because that represents the shape of the face inside, okay? Whereas, but on the face, I will tend to stay on the inside of the lines, right? Hope that totally made sense, that maybe confused you. But uh, again, and there's no right or wrong, it's just kind of something that you have to figure out for yourself. But uh, I personally like to put my priorities on keeping the face shape very clear. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and get back into this. <laughs> oh, another thing that I wanna tell you guys about is uh, another helpful thing that I used to do when I was hacking my way through the jungle. I used to actually, I used to do the character in sort of like layers, right? I would start a part of the character in a layer. So say like the hair and the face is on a layer and I like the way that looks. So now let's make a new layer because we're about to start, say, overlaying some other lines. And we want to focus on having cleanliness, right? We want cleanliness in our lines. So I want you guys to be willing to be able to sort of like run past first base, right? Uh, that's a term like you would do. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, don't go there. No, I'm talking baseball, okay? Literally the opposite of what just popped up in your mind. Baseball, okay? So when you hit the ball, right, you can run past first base and, and basically kind of track around. Okay, so that is what I'm talking about here. So um, basically, what, that, what I'm saying is make a new layer so that way you can do stuff like this. So that way you can do stuff like this. I can't believe I just said that on the show. That's so terrible. So you can do stuff like this, but then you can go in there and erase this line. But see how I can't affect the previous lines? I can't affect the lines that were already there. So um, yeah, so that's what you should do. Always run past first base, guys. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Continuing. So now let's go ahead and do this and let's go ahead and see if we can get one of those. And, and again, like ask yourself, yeah, is that the line that I want or do you think I could do it better? Do, do I, can I do it better? I think so, boom. And you wanna really get like these strokes down. It's almost like you're using the machete, but there's an extra stabilizer on it. And so that's why I want you guys to have your fingers on uh, Control-Z, because it'll take a couple tries, but then eventually you'll get to that point and you're like, ooh, that one looks really good. But then there's a couple things in here that I just need to kind of clean those up a little bit, right? Clean that up a tad, and then you're good to go, right? Cool, cool. Uh, let's go ahead and do the underside of the arm. Right? I keep wanting to like adjust the size of the, the brush. However, that's not necessary for what we're doing here because we're working with animation lines. And the more uniform your lines look, the better, right? Oh, here's another cool thing about uh, working on a separate layer. Let's say that I actually was smart and made a new layer for that, and I drew that line, right? Sometimes you'll make a line that looks good, but it's a little off. So if you go layer by layer, um, you can then kind of move it up a little bit. Be like, I like that line flow, but I want it to be more like right there, okay? Then what you can do is hit Control E, right? Pay attention down here to layer 14 and 13. I'll just merge those two together and see, now they're both on the same layer. Let's create a new layer. And let's go ahead and create a line right here. Oops, let's create a line right here. Now there is a, a tad bit of waiting. There's a very, very slight bit of waiting. In fact, I should probably show you guys how I set that up uh, for this brush. Uh, so the way that that's actually set up is right here in your brush or shape dynamics, right? Right here uh, on your brush settings. Uh, my minimum diameter, I've moved it to 50%. Now pay attention close uh, down here. See how it has that little, that little preview there? So when you set it to 50%, it basically says, okay, the lowest that the diameter can go based upon my pressure sensitivity will not be less than half of seven pixels. So it's not gonna go less than three and a half pixels, okay? Now, I do that on personal preference. Technically, you can make it so that way there's no size degradation at all, but uh, 
I don't know, that's just the way I like it. Because I like a little bit. I like a little bit of line weighting in my stuff, okay? And I think you can get away with that in animation. I'm not sure yet because I haven't actually translated this over to full animation, but uh, I possibly may be in the future. So let's go ahead and move on to the hand, okay? Making a new layer, new layer on top. And let's go ahead and line this hand. Boom, boom, boom. Whoops. It just feels so strange, like having, like one thing that I'm sure you guys will enjoy as you use this tool is that it almost feels, it'll feel foreign at first, uh, just because you're not used to Photoshop being this responsive or this like helpful, I guess. Normally you have to, I don't know, I feel like Photoshop is almost a little bit of a tool you have to wrestle with a little bit. Now I feel it's really handy for creating things. Like when you're creating like messy artworks or rather like sketchy things, like most of the time what I'm doing, or creating splash arts for a game where a lot of texture and, and experimentation is needed. I, I really feel that Photoshop is great for that. However, when you really want to create something that is ultra clean, uh, there's not a lot of tools available for that, unfortunately. But Lazy Nazumi comes to the rescue once again. Whoops! Ah, there we go. I hope you guys are getting a kick out of watching me use this for the first time. Because this is like really, really crazy. There we go. And I think my favorite thing about it is that it actually allows you to move slowly. It allows you to move slowly because honestly, when you're creating careful lines, like imagine that you're doing this in your sketchbook, how would you actually create those careful lines? Would you quickly just like throw down those pen strokes and do that stuff? No, you would, oh, actually maybe some of you do. And if you do, then I'm very jealous of you if you can do that. But uh, when I line in my sketchbook, I always draw very, very slowly. I always draw very slowly. Um, so I feel like this is a lot better for that, okay? So there's our hand, okay? Let's go ahead and connect these little lines in here. Love it! Now see how all those, do you see all the problems that I had to solve in this? Like there's a lot of gray areas in here. It was like, who said that there had to be lines there? You know, is there a line there? Or is there a line on the outside? Or is there lines here? You know, it's like, how do you figure all that stuff out? It's like, those are the things that you have to, those are the problems that you have to solve. And hopefully by watching me, it'll give you a little bit more insight for how I like to do it. But oftentimes, I will say this, oftentimes the problem can be solved by either going to the inside of your lines or the outside, okay? Or in the middle. That basically didn't mean anything. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> I don't even know. That was probably the most obvious statement that you guys have ever heard. But um, yeah, I think more so what I was trying to say was understanding when it's important to go on the inside of your lines, like when to go on the inside and when to go on the outside of your lines. And understanding that it's going to look a little bit robotic, right? It's not gonna have as much character, right? It's not gonna have as much character as your pictures with your weighted lines, okay? And, and that's what I really feel like Lazy Nazumi is maybe not so good for. Right? If you want that organic feeling, if you want that, you know, it's gonna give you clean lines. Let's go ahead and take this away. Let's see what we've got here. So see how all of our lines are very, very clean? It's not like, it's gonna translate pretty well to something like this, right? Because we have, you know, a lot of these lines, like imagine all the colors removed from this picture. Like the lines don't have a lot of character to themselves, right? They have style, but it's not the same amount that you would get from a very like weighted piece. It's not gonna look the same as something, you know, like, like our original outline, like our original outlines like this. It's not gonna have that same bold look, okay? So, and another possible thing that we could do is just thicken the lines on all of these, like have a thicker line style. But uh, I really wanted for this piece to look like it was an actual anime, like a, like a traditional Japanese anime, and they use thin lines on a lot of those things. So, that's why we're doing what we're doing. So let's continue. Uh, this is actually taking a little bit longer than I thought it would, and I don't want to keep you guys here forever. So maybe what we'll do is we'll just finish Mika's head and her arm, and then we will uh, call it good. We're going to call it good after that. But yeah, this is a very heavy experimentation phase, or exper experimental, experiment, experimentary, <laughs> whatever you would call this. Uh, oh, perfect example of when it's time to make a new layer, right here. Okay, we're going to put this little bonnet. We're going to draw the bonnet. And we wanna be lazy with this. We wanna be super lazy with this. 
So we're gonna draw this up. Oh, we're gonna draw this up and around. Nope, up and around. There we go, oh, almost. It's really weird how, oh, okay, that's pretty good. That was pretty good, I like that one. I'm gonna move this up a little bit. Ah, ha, ha, look at that, perfect. Thank you, Lazy Nizumi. Thank you very much for that. So yeah, you can see that's how I go about making those big sweeping lines. You gotta do it all in one shot. And Lazy Nizumi makes it so much easier. All right, cool. Now, just for the heck of it, let's try to do this hair with that same, let's take the machete out and let's do this hair. Let's see how much uh, harder or easier that can be. Okay, so it's not bad, right? We can still do that. Boom, ah, that actually looks quite nice. New layer, boom, easy, easy, easy. So you might wanna jump back and forth between uh, two different types. You might wanna jump on to uh, using the machete a little bit, go back to Lazy Nizumi for a little bit. Uh, however, if I was to do this entire line, if I, let me try to do that bonnet again without the Lazy Nizumi, let's see how, cause here's how I would do it. I would literally go like this, and then I would just constantly do this over and over and over again until I got something that was kind of close. I've even gotten to the point where I do this, where I'll create a new layer. I'll make a line like this, right? And I was like, okay, that's, that's smooth, but it's close. It's not exactly what I want, but it's close. And then I'll hit Control T and then I'll hit Warp, right? And this is another good tool that you guys can use if you don't want to use Lazy Nizumi. And look, you can kind of pull your line into place. Pull your line into place. This is actually something that I did a lot when I was uh, doing other stuff for my client work. Uh, see, so you can actually get a similar thing. It just takes a couple extra steps. And it's really, I don't know, it's not a right or a wrong way. Just experimenting with new tools and see what you like, okay? So, and personally, they both get you about the same effect. So, uh, and that's really what I wanted to give you guys today. I really wanted to give you guys choices because I'm a big fan of not saying that you have to do it one way. I like options. I like giving you guys options. So, please feel free to do that. But me, for now, I'm really enjoying this lazy line technique. Getting lazy with those lines. See, look at that. It's just like, mm, so good. Oh, it just like goes right on there. It's like very pleasurable to see that happen. I like it. <laughs> All right, now uh, let's go ahead and make a new layer. Now notice how I drew the hairline straight through there. Now, why did I do that? Well, because I know it's gonna be on its own layer. And now say for this part of her little apron or whatever this the piece that comes off the shoulder, I'm just gonna draw that through like that. I'm gonna draw that through like that. Okay, close enough. And then what I can do is just return to my prior layer and I can just erase that. Isn't that awesome? And now I know that that line connects straight through, okay? And that's something that I would suggest that you guys do. Think about your lines and layers. Think about your lines and layers because you have the ability to do that. You have the luxury of being able to do that with Photoshop. So why not take advantage of it? And let's go ahead and finish that off. That off. I'm really enjoying this. This is very, very fun. Very, very fun. And at the least, guys, at least just download this stuff. Do download this thing and try it for 30 days. Because, I mean, you guys might like it, you might hate it. But let's get into the face, okay? Because this is probably the most important part that uh, is gonna be part of your character. And this is probably one of the main points where I really feel that Lazy Nizumi is not going to help us that much, except for on these eyebrows, which are look really nice when they're smoothed out. Yeah, I like that. So smoothed out eyebrows are always nice. We like that a lot. Ah! Uh, but does Mika have thick eyebrows? I don't know. I don't know if that's gonna look weird because by contrast now, her eyebrows are gonna be very thick compared to all the other lines. So maybe I'll have them be a little bit thinner. I still have a little bit of volume on the edge there, but, but overall just thinner. Yeah, there we go. There we go, those look more like anime eyebrows. Cool. Now, um, so I really feel like, well actually I said that the Lazy Nizumi might not help with her face, but the more I look at it, the more I think it actually will. 
Because I mean, having smooth lines here for things like the mouth, I think will really help. Wow, yeah, that actually looks really nice. Very nice. Now imagine, could you imagine guys if I, <laughs> I just had a really funny idea. Um, if I, I mean, this would only work on April Fools, of course, because otherwise I'd feel like total crap. But I was like, okay guys, we're gonna do lines today. And I just like had this lazy Nazumi like open, but I just like moved it to the other screen. I just like moved it over here and be like, okay, we're just gonna get into Photoshop and like start doing some lines. And they're like ultra like smooth. And everybody's like, what? How do you do that? I mean, if I saw that, I'd be like, okay, what the heck? What kind of joke is this? Look at this jokester over here using lazy Nazumi, moving it to the other screen, okay? But anyway, <laughs> just a silly idea that I had. Um, so let's get back into this, okay? I'm trying, I'm trying to stall because you can tell I'm very, very nervous about this. Very nervous. I've never used Lazy Nazumi to line a character's face before. Oh, but I'm really liking the way it looks. This looks so cool. Okay, let's move on to the eyes. Okay, now the eyes, I really feel, are one of the places. Hey, let's go ahead and consult Gurren Lagan because I think on the eyes, oh, you do actually do have heavy especially on the girl's eyelashes, you have heavier lines in those areas and you can get away with that stuff. So let's go ahead and use that to our advantage. Let's use that to our advantage because I really think that the, the character's face would not look the same without the weighted eyes, the weighted uh, eyelashes rather. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna treat it as um, almost like a two line thing. So I'm drawing the inside of the line and I'm drawing the outside of the line. So we're doing the insides first. Oh. Boom, oh, okay, well, close enough. There we go, and it's gonna look weird. She's gonna look like a raccoon at first, but that is okay. And then you really gotta like figure out, okay, what is the actual like, what is the actual shape of these eyelashes? I kinda had to do this for Emma when I was doing the, the comic. I had to figure out exactly like what the rules were for her eyelashes. That way I could replicate them over and over again and still have like a clean line art style. Cause most of the time, once I get to the eyes, they get kind of fuzzy. They get a little fuzzy, a little blurry uh, in my paintings. And I like it that way, I like it that way. But in animation, you can't necessarily get away with that stuff cause everything has to be a clean shape. At least for this style. Uh, oh man, I'm having a lot of trouble with these eyes for some reason. But we're getting there, we're getting there. Okay, boom, oh, boom. I'll probably end up turning this off and going back in there, making a couple minor adjustments. Okay, cool, wow, that looks great. Let's go ahead and put in our blush lines. Okay, Lazy Nazumi is not helping us anymore. Turn it off. All right, let's go ahead and get in there. Let's put some of these blush lines in. Man, that looks like crap. Why does that look like such crap? I have been tainted. I have been tainted by the Lazy Nazumi. Okay, back on for the eyes because I definitely can use it here. Oh, nearly perfect. I'm sure you guys can see just how mesmerized I am when I'm doing this. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, that's close enough. All right, so now we can clean up the rest. Let's go ahead and turn off the Lazy Nazumi. Let's go ahead and kind of clean this stuff up. Whoops. Or actually, here's another cool thing that I like to do is I'll take my magical wand and I'll just grab these, right? Uh, and I'm going to fill these, but the first thing that I'm going to do is that I need to expand the selection, okay? So I'm gonna do that by going to select, modify, expand, and I'm expanded by two pixels, right? Now what this does is it removes the artifacts that happen when you oftentimes do this. Uh, oftentimes when you fill, sometimes there's like a little like imperfection along the original line. So if you expand it and then fill it, it basically goes ahead and gets rid of that for you. Okay, now we can go back in there and let's go ahead and clean up these little tiny edges. Get those eyes looking proper. All right, 
we are zoomed in to 300% now, making those tiny corrections. Remember, cause the face is the place. The face is the important place. Ooh, dang, that was a, that was a good, you see that? Just like, poof, just macheted that, man. That's what you call it now. So there's two, when you just lay down a good line, you're just like, dude, I totally macheted that line. <laughs> there you go, now the term has been coined. So I hope you guys enjoy that. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna say from now on. Dude, I totally just macheted that line. All right, guys, cool. So. Check it out, we've got some clean lines going. So that actually, I could see that working very well. Once we're done and like we start throwing in like the, the flat shapes or the flat shades of color and the cell shading, I think that's gonna look really good as a final anime piece. That is so awesome. All right, so I think that is going to end it. All righty, people. So thank you so much for joining me on YouTube. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. Oh, if you would like to get today's PSD as well as all the other PSDs and just click up here, you can download this, support the show, and be awesome. And I really have to say something about that. Really have to say something about that. Because Thanksgiving just passed. It's that time of year again. Christmas is coming. And this is like a really long show. So if you guys actually stuck past this point or if you are still sitting here at this point, then this is really for you. And that is that I truly appreciate you guys. I truly appreciate it and I love you guys. Not just the people that support me monetarily on Patreon, but the people that view this stuff, the people that submit art to the Facebook, the people that tell their friends about the show, and most of all, the people that actually learn stuff. And I, I love seeing stuff that I teach you guys and then you guys take that and you put it into another piece that you guys post to the Imsy or you post to the Facebook. And um, I was just thinking about it last night. I was really thinking about it last night. And, and this is expanding upon what I said in the beginning, right? Oh, and I just realized we didn't do a question catapult. Oh, shoot, that sucks. <laughs> okay, well, I will have to do maybe two next week because I usually have it all prepared and everything, but I don't have anything today. So I will make it up to you guys by doing just a bit of a longer thoughtful. Okay, so expanding upon what I was talking about earlier, and that is um, that, that fight for territory, right? Like you can be all happy with yourself. You can think your art is amazing. You think your show is amazing. You'd be like, man, I'm teaching people. Man, I'm so great. And, and like, I'm living the life and this is what I wanted to do and I'm finally here. But it's like, there's that constant fight for territory of like, there's like that negativity that always wants to pull you back. And it's like, you don't know what you're doing. Oh yeah, you think you're great. Oh, no, there's tons of people out there that are better than you. And, and oh yeah, you're living the dream lifestyle. Well, you don't deserve it. You cheated to get here. You messed with people. You, you, uh, you scammed people to get here. And it's like all those things, all those terrible things that kind of come to you, even though they're not necessarily true. I mean, don't get me wrong. Some people do scam people, but I honestly don't believe I have because I started the show to help people and I've never forced anybody to support me in any way. But, but you guys have, and that is so awesome. It just, it means truly so much. And the, the main thought that I was having last night was that, you know, I feel like more people need to admit to themselves that they deserve what they have, whether it's good or bad. You know, they deserve the things that they have. Um, and they need to take a look at the reasons that got them there, right? They need to own why they are where they are, right? Whether, and the good and the bad things. And so, and there's plenty of things that I want to improve upon in my life, but there's plenty of things that are great that I'm just not admitting to myself that I deserve, right? And, um, and, and this amazing supporting community, right, that, that you guys are, the people that watch my show, it's like, I do deserve that because I put the value out there, I took a chance, and I did it for years. And guess what happens when people do that? Guess what happens when people start a show and they continue it for, for years and years and years, putting out content, trying to help people, and teaching people? Guess what? They get a loyal, supporting, awesome fan base like you guys, right? So I'm through telling myself that I don't deserve to have amazing people like you watching my show, okay? So that's out of there. Right, it's gonna keep coming back. But then I also thought about something else. And I was like, you know what? I feel like because of that, because of the awesome community that I have attracted to me and the people that are here, you guys deserve a lot more too. You guys need to understand what you deserve. And I need to recognize what you guys deserve. And I really think that I can be doing better. I really believe that I can be doing better. So I wanna tell you guys that that has been on my mind and it's a new commitment for me that I am going to be just trying to do better, I guess, whatever that means. It's like, whether it's like making the shows a little bit longer, showing you guys a little bit more of like my real time drawing, right? Because I show you guys the time lapses all the time, but I know that those don't teach you. I want you guys to see this stuff real time, even, it's, even though it's a little bit more boring. 
uh, even though it takes forever. It literally took me probably like 45 minutes to line this Mika face. But I want you guys to, to see everything. And I think that was another thing, is that I want you guys to see me for who I really am. Not the person, well, I mean, it's it, it's pretty easy to like develop like a fantasy of who you think uh, a person is on the internet, right? But I, I, want, I want you guys to get closer, right? Get closer to K and Kale. I want you guys to see me with my crazy hair. I want you guys to see me uh, in the times where I'm doubting myself. I want you guys to see the struggle, right, that's happening. And I want to tell you guys about it because I'm sure that you guys are going through that same stuff as well. And it's really easy when someone doesn't show that to think that something is wrong with you. But I guarantee you guys that there is nothing wrong with you and the problems that you're dealing with, a lot of people are probably dealing with the same. And I wish that more people would be more upfront with that type of stuff. So a little bit of a thoughtful at the end there, but I'm totally flapping my gums. I felt like that needed to get out. I want to tell you guys, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. And for those of you who aren't American, I hope you had a great whatever you guys do around this time. Hopefully it's not as cold as it is here. Seriously, look at the window. Look, look out the window. And look, look at this. Look at how cold it is here. It's freaking freezing. Can't believe it. Hopefully it's warmer wherever you are at. I truly miss California already. I was just there hanging out with my friends. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys are having a good end of the year. I'm excited for the new year. And uh, call it a early resolution, an early resolution that I promise that I am going to be doing more for you guys. All right, so before we go, I want to say thank you to my amazing sponsors. Laura Bashir, David Chiariello, and Megan Gwynn and the Chanseys. Thank you guys so much for supporting the show. Would not be the same without you. Thank you to everyone who has been watching the show. Hope you enjoyed the anime hair, by the way. I really believe... Oh, that was the last thing. Lazy, lazy Nizumi? Yeah, that's all right. Uh, machete technique? Yeah, that's all right. The real secret is right here. You got to have anime hair while you're creating pieces like this one over here. So, <laughs> you guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you guys next week. And until then, you guys stay awesome. See ya.